You've never seen someone haul an ass in a prowler because it's not impressive. It doesn't sound impressive. The speed isn't impressive. The only thing is you look at it twice. That's the prowler. You're like, what the f this look? Fuck is that? I don't think they're done. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Why Did They Make This Car? The shallow dive roast show on just some of the most god-awful cars out there. My name is Abbas Wahab. If it's your first time on the channel, please smash that subscribe button so you can get updates on when the next video drops. Uh, just so you know, I have a comedy podcast called The Immigrant Section. It's on this channel. Episodes drop every Tuesday. I talk with comedians, funny immigrant entertainers, artists. It's just unfiltered comedy, so make sure to check that out. Uh, for today's episode, based on your comments, we are doing the Chrysler Prowler, a.k.a. the Plymouth Prowler. It's just Plymouth died before the vehicle even ended its production run. So let's take a look at the Plymouth Prowler, the car that should never have been. If you've never seen the Plymouth Prowler, pretty much the only place it appears in movies or TV, unlike Walter White with the Aztec, is Friday After Next with Cat Williams, a.k.a. his character Money Mike pulls up in the Plymouth and it's perfect. It's the perfect pimp car because it's all bark, no bite. Check the scene out. Short but big. Short but big. Hold up, wait a minute. Let me put some pimping in it. <laughs> the Prowler is the pimp car. Why? Because it is all bark, no bite. It's got nothing under the hood, so to speak. Let's take a look at why it even got created. So Plymouth released this car in 1997. And Plymouth was like the entry level manufacturer relative to Chrysler. So they wanted a cool car to reinvigorate the whole brand. It was dying. Their sales had been plummeting after the 90s and Plymouth died in 2000. So they had to switch it over to Chrysler. That's why you'll see Plymouth and Chrysler Prowlers on the market. Under the hood was a three and a half liter V6 which was standard in their LH sedans, a.k.a. the Dodge Intrepid. I like to call it the high school dealer's go-to vehicle. If somebody didn't drop you weed in this car, were you even in high school? The same motor in the Intrepid went into the Prowler. It's all bark, no bite. This got made to a four-speed automatic. The Prowler, this ultra-aggressive, cool concept-looking sports car, wasn't even offered in a manual. It goes to show you just how confused this whole project was. The Plymouth Prowler looks like engineers just took a toy car and were like, let's life-size this shit right here. It's like, should we give it a crazy motor and crazy performance? Nah, just exteriors, nothing else. According to the former head of design at Chrysler, a dude named Tom Gale, he's saying the Prowler itself was a means for Chrysler and Plymouth to essentially experiment with aluminum. So the idea of the Prowler itself was supposed to be almost design project reinvigorating it was many things all at once which led to its obvious fail in five years of production the prowler sold only 11,702 units that makes the pontiac aztec look like a toyota corolla okay a little car joke for y'all you suck. The 1997 model, its MSRP was an asking price of $38,300. And just for a comparison, the 1997 BMW M3 base, so it has a five-speed manual, rear-wheel drive, just like the Prowler, $39,380. And the 1997 Porsche Boxster, so a convertible rear-wheel drive on a five-speed manual as well was 39980 So although the car was on the lighter end of its competitors, it did not compete at all when it comes to actual performance. The M3 had a 0 to 60 of 5.5 seconds and the Boxer had a 0 to 60 of 6.1 compared to 7.1 on the Prowler. From a price point, it was pretty much right there with its competitors performance nowhere in the same conversation not to mention the fact that it only has the automatic gearbox option the word prowl itself is to move about or wander stealthily in or as if in search of prey the only thing that this car is looking for is fucking middle-aged men who are about to have a midlife crisis <laughs> This car should be called the Plymouth Midlife Crisis or Prowler, the Midlife Chrysler. Easily, what I think is probably the ugliest part of this thing is these little bumpers they got in the front. 
bumperettes, whatever you want to call them, because they already got their headlights up there. I'm like, what's the point of this? Apparently, they couldn't be road legal without these. So I guess this is where you're, I don't know if it's just for a place to mount your license plate or if it's for crash test reasons, but they have to include these pieces that look like they got thrown on last second. The trunk space was so bad on this car, they had to create like a custom looking purse like trailer. And the trailer cost $5,075 from the retailer back in the 90s. Look at this thing. When you see this car, you don't think the interior is going to be as cheap as it is. It's it's almost shockingly cheap. Like, are you really going to have the exact same interior as the Intrepid, but give it a nice dash with the matching exterior color? Like, ooh, that gives it that sports-inspired vibe. Yeah, people will be in here thinking like, yeah, this was a good $40,000 buy. Yeah, let me just put it in D and erase this Mustang over here, you know? Like, why did you center it? You gotta like, you gotta ask the passenger how your oil temperature is. It's so far to the right. Like, hey, hey, are we good? Oh no, actually, we're we're overheating, bro. Pull over. This car, the exterior makes it feel like it's a performance car, but nothing else indicates that. I mean, I guess besides it having an aggressive look and no trunk space, those are the only things about it that are indicative of a sports car. What the fuck is the Prowler? But there are some diehard Prowler people. I actually went and checked out the forums. This dude took his Prowler out for a spin and the guy under it comments, never get tired of looking at Prowlers. <laughs> never get tired of looking at Prowlers. Never. In 99, the engine got tuned up from 214 to 253 and 255. So it got like a 20% horsepower boost and about a 10% torque boost and pushed the 060 down to 5.8, which was definitely put it more in line with what the competitors were pulling at the time. According to Tom Gale, because of the weird clearances of this car, it could not fit a V8 and meet the crash test rating. And now he goes, oh, you know, looking back now, had it had a V8, it probably would have been successful. Duh, you think? You know what I mean? It sold less copies than the Microsoft Zune, okay? And now you're thinking, should have probably put a V8 in there. See, I get it. I get it. You know, unlike the Pontiac Aztec, which is just a disgusting car, I kind of get the appeal of the Prowler, right? It's a car that they dared to dream, you know? They were going for a whole different thing. And they failed, but I respect the attempt. Hey, you know what? Chrysler, they know how to handle aluminum now, so I guess they got what they wanted. They made a car that's not fast, that looks like it should be fast. It looks like it's not done, doesn't have enough trunk space. So they made a $5,000 little trailet purse to tug around with you in your automatic four speed. If you got one, hey, no beef, okay? All right, I got nothing against it. I'm just saying you got it for the looks, right? As always, please leave in the comments what car I should do next. I appreciate you all big time. I'd love to see what you mentioned. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you already haven't. Uh, until next time, it's Abbas Wahab. I'll see you all then. Bye.